Good morning, folks. Uh, this is a short video about graphing the sine function. Uh, today we're filming from Scenic Room 4006. Um, do you enjoy the joke on the front? The first thing we want to talk about is the parent function of sine. So sine looks like a wave, but it's not just a messy wave. It's a very neat wave, and it's very regular and very predictable. It starts at zero, and it always goes for the same points in the same order. It goes up, then it returns to the middle, then it goes down, and then it returns to the middle. Sine came from a wheel, and so the behavior of the function is the same as the behavior of a wheel. Up, down, middle, down, up, down, etc. So this function that you see right here has an amplitude of one unit and a period of four units. Those are the basic ideas that you need to solve functions like this. Let's go ahead and graph something. The function that we first want to graph has a midline at y equals 1, an amplitude of 2 units, and a period of 8 seconds. You're going to start by graphing the midline. So it looks like the numbers are small, so we can just keep the scale at 1 to 1 for this particular graph. So draw the midline, and maybe make a mark on the y-axis that reminds us that this is at 1. The amplitude is going to be 2 units, so up from 1, 2 units, you can draw another line. That's going to be the highest value of the graph, so you can make a mark at 1 plus 2 is 3. And down from the midline, down 2 units, you'll be at negative 1. So you can make another horizontal line like this. So we're going to go back to our parent function and try to mimic it, but instead of it living along the axis like this, it's going to live in the space in between these two lines. It's still going to start at zero, or it's going to start not at zero, but at the midline. It's still going to start at the midline. Here the ending spot was just at the end of the period, four units away. So now we need to make our ending spot eight units away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's going to be the ending spot of our period. Going back to the parent, it crosses the midline, again, halfway in between the start and the end. So on this function, halfway in between the start and the end is going to be at one, two, three, four units. Our parent function, halfway between the first cross of the midline and the second cross of the midline, attains its maximum. So it's going to attain the maximum at two units. And halfway between the last two midline crossings, it attains its minimum. So that's going to happen at six units. So kind of attach a scale to your x-axis. We have a little scale on our y-axis. We don't have to scale out every single number, but we've got the important numbers, and that is what is important. Now that we have those spots, draw the curve. Up, down, keep going down. Curve so it's kind of starting to go up, and back up, and that's one full period of the function. Notice that something kind of changes every two units, right? The length here is 2, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. So if you have a period of 8, and you want to know what the spacing of these kind of landmark dots will be, you can take that period and divide it by 4. That's just a graphing tip. Period divided by 4 isn't like a special quantity. It's nothing, it doesn't have a name, but it is a really helpful thing for graphing. So something changes every two units on this. I'm going to go ahead and draw the second full period. Once you've got the first one, you just kind of mirror it. So over two, up two, over two, down two, over two, down two, and over two, up two again. There's the landmark points. Keep the smooth curve continuing through. And sometimes it's nice to draw it a little bit past and attach an arrow to the end. You can even draw on the other side a little bit past and attach an arrow to the end just to indicate that the pattern continues in both directions. All right, now we're going to graph something where you have the equation only. So for this one, if you have the midline amplitude and period, the graph is sort of simple. But here I didn't give you any of that stuff. So before we can graph this one, I want to take a look at the general form equation. The general form equation of a sine function is y equals a sine of bx plus d. a, b, and d should be numbers x is the variable in the equation, so that's like the label on your axis. Um, the midline is given by y equals, because it's a 
horizontal line, D, the middle. Amplitude is given by the A value. And the period is not equal to B. You can find the period by doing 360 divided by B, the value inside the equation. B represented the angular speed of the Ferris wheel. So if you think back to our lesson on the wheels and how we found the angular speed, it was by taking 360 and dividing by the period. To find the period, you can reverse the process. Okay, I'm going to leave this on the side. And now we're going to go look at the equation I've given you. So the midline is going to be at y equals negative 4. The amplitude is going to be 5 units. And the period is whatever 360 divided by 20 is. So that's going to be 18 seconds. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and draw the midline at y equals negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to draw the midline here. Uh, negative 4 plus 5 would be positive 1. So the max value is going to be here. And at 1, this is negative 4. And negative 4 minus 5 is going to be at negative 9. So I could go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And draw the minimum value right here. So this graph is going to be kind of big if we scale it 1 to 1. Um, the period is 18 seconds. So 18 seconds, if I go all the way out to here, that graph's going to be really messy. So instead, I'm going to choose to scale this by 3s. So we'll go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. 21, 24, 27, 30. So 18 is going to be the start and end of our period. So we'll place our landmark points again. Landmark point at 0. Uh, 0 on the y-axis. Landmark point at 18, the end of the period. Halfway in between, 0 and 18 is 9. So it's going to cross the midline again. And halfway in between 0 and 9 is 4.5, so it's going to be right in between here. At that point, it's going to be above the midline at the max value. Here, between the second and third dots, it's going to be below the midline at the min value. So these are the dots that are important. I'm going to go ahead and draw so the spacing here is 1.5 apart. I'm just going to keep going with the pattern. 1.5 over, it's going to be at the max. Another 1.5 over, it's going to be at the midline. Another 1.5 over, it's going to be at the minimum. And another 1.5 over, it will be back with two full cycles, and that would be at, at uh, 30, 33, 36, which is 2 times 18. All right, now we're going to draw the smooth curve. So kind of coming through here, this curve is sort of tricky to draw. Try to get it as curve-like as you can. It should change shape a little bit as it goes. It should look like a very good slide. Whee! And it'll pass through that point and sort of start to curve up again. Draw your arrows on either end, and you are done. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been helpful. Please see me if you have any questions, and have a lovely day.